The American Revolution could be the coolest thing that has ever happened in this country. And I think we lose sight of that because we look at the boring pictures of George Washington going, and we think, gosh, you know, who would want to hang out with him? <gasps> but we have to remember that nothing had ever happened like that. A people taking control of their destiny and saying those magical words, the magical words of the Declaration of Independence uh, that said that everybody is equal, that everybody should have a chance, and that people were going to drive their country instead of an aristocracy. The leaders of the American Revolution put everything on the line at the risk of their life. If the British had caught them, they would have been hung and quartered and all of their goods would have been confiscated. So it wasn't boring at all. It was life and death and exciting, and that's why we're here today. I think a lot about what I would have been, you know, because there weren't that many opportunities um, for women to act as soldiers. You'd have to dress as a man, and if you were caught, you could get in a lot of trouble. Women were active participants as camp followers. They marched with the army, they camped with the army, they washed, they cooked, they sewed, they showed up on the battlefield running in ammunition. There was a woman killed at the Battle of Saratoga with her apron filled with gunpowder cartridges because the men on the field had run out of them. So I suspect, I, you know, knowing the kind of family I, I come from, we don't come from much money, so my brothers or, or father or uncles would have volunteered to fight because you know, the only thing they had to fight for was their country, and I would have been one of those women running gunpowder into the, into the guys on the battlefield. There's so many people in history that I'd like to say thank you to. Of all the founding, uh, founding guys, founding fathers, that's so, so ponderous, but of all the founding dudes, I think George, uh, first of all, he didn't have as much education as a lot of the other founding fathers. And what I really respect and admire about him is that he continued to grow and learn over the course of the Revolution. When the American Revolution started, he was an old school southern plantation owner who believed that people of color belonged enslaved and in bondage. By the end of the war, his attitude had changed. By the end of his life, his attitude had truly changed. And he's one of the few founders who had an open heart and an open mind about that. So. I respect him so much for his openness to learn and, and for creating this incredible nation that we have. So thank you, George. People often ask authors, you know, what's your message, you know, or what's your theme? And I have one job as an author. My job is to write a great story. The challenge that I set for myself is I want the, my younger readers to be yelled at by their parents, to turn off the light and go to bed. And I want the kids to say, no, no, just one more chapter. If I can keep a reader turning pages, I've accomplished my job.